Welcome to part 4 of our GarageBand 10.1 tutorial. In this episode we're going to talk about how to edit a track. We'll also talk about how to, how to apply effects to certain types of tracks. Uh, let's begin with the latter there. Let's talk about how to change and add an effect to a track. Before we edit it or after we edit it, it doesn't really matter which order you do that in. Uh, one thing that you need to know is in GarageBand there is no way to apply an a, I'm sorry, there is no way to apply an effect to just a portion of a track. It's kind of an all or nothing sort of thing. Uh, more expensive software certainly does have that ability, but in GarageBand, if you want to add an effect, it does go to the entire track. Throughout this tutorial, you'll learn how to split tracks so that you can apply an effect um, to a track and then split off parts of the track that you don't want to apply the effect to. But Overall, if you want to apply an effect in GarageBand, it has to happen to the entire track. So let's talk about that. You'll be able to see it happen. If I click play here, you'll Hi, see... Hi, this is Adam Cochran. I'm an instructor of Colorado... You'll see that it looks or sounds just like my typical voice. In fact, it's hard to tell what the voiceover is and the recorded voiceover and which one is the live narration that I'm doing here. But if I come over here to voice, I can choose different types of effects to that track. So here I can click on telephone vocal and now you'll see a drastic change. Oh, mate, yep, messed up. My name's Adam Cochran. Uh, uh, I'm an instructor. And that's the voice track with errors. If you haven't watched the previous videos, we talk about how to record that voice track. And uh, throughout this video, we'll talk about how to remove those mistakes and errors and compress the track for time. So here we are with this recorded track. I've applied an effect to it. Primarily, I've applied this effect just so you can tell when I'm doing a live voiceover versus the recorded voice track that I have here in GarageBand. So now we're ready to start editing. You'll notice that in this track, I have a false start. I begin, and then I make a mistake, and then I start over. Hi, this is Adam Cochran. I'm an instructor of Colorado Mate. Yep, messed up. My name's Adam Cochran. Okay, so great. There we are. I want to begin with that second start. So if I click on this track here, didn't mean to slide it over there. There we go. We have this uh, track here. If I double click on it, you will see that down here at the bottom, uh, the track appears and it's a much closer view. I can even bring it in closer if you want, or if I want to. Uh, I can come over here to this little slider bar and I can zoom in and see the track closer. That's very handy if there's a little pop or a click or something that's difficult to see in the waveform, you can zoom in on it and do some very precise editing. Now, when I go to edit this, I want to look at two things. One thing, I need to make sure this little playhead button is pressed, and I want to make sure that this button, this uh, hide show flex toggle, I need to make sure that's turned off. And the reason is that that flex will flex the time and it's made for mostly for musicians in case uh, one instrument didn't hold a note long enough or maybe it held the note too long. It allows you to expand or compress the time uh, for that particular instrument. It doesn't work very well for voice. It tends to slow the voice down or speed it up too quickly. So here we are. We're ready to edit. We have these things chosen. And now if I move my mouse over into this track, as soon as you see that that mouse arrow moves down past the halfway point, you'll see that the cursor turns into a crosshair. At that point, you know that you're ready to edit, and I just want to click and hold my left mouse button down and drag it all the way across. And once that's selected, I can hit delete. Now when I delete there, you'll see that there's still a little bit there that I missed. I can just delete that out too. And then if I want to, I can come up here and I can drag and I can move that back at the beginning. So this is how we begin. My name's Adam Cochran. Uh, uh, I'm an instructor. Of and you can see I made another mistake there, although it was intentional for demonstration purposes. I did make a mistake, so I can drag this across the area that I uh, stumbled and muttered there. And I just delete that out. And then I can move these 
closer together. Now I can leave a little bit of a gap there if I want to. You won't be able to hear it because it's dead air anyway. So if I move the track across, you're going to see this. I'm Cochran. I'm an instructor of mass communication at Colorado at Colorado. So I have this other mistake here and I can do the same thing and delete that out. Now that I've hit delete, um, I can move these tracks closer together, only it works better if you do it up here at the top. Move these tracks closer together, even overlap them a little bit if I want to. Now if I decide or if I realize that I edited too much out, let me show you an example of that. If I edited too much out, say up here at the top, on this track, communication, if I want to have a little bit more or less of that, if I place my mouse at the end of a track, and drag, it actually will add back in the parts I deleted. So you can be a little bit precise there. If you make a mistake, it's not that big of a deal because it doesn't actually delete the track out. It just removes it so that you can't hear it in the editing process. So if I move these closer together, we're going to see how that sounds. If I want to take a closer look up here at the top, I have another zoom lens or sorry, another zoom slider that lets me look at this top bar. Although I can't do any editing up here by taking stuff out, uh, it does allow me to kind of compare those two waveforms and uh, see where I'm editing. So this is what my track sounds like. Ask communication at Colorado Mesa University. Thank you very much for joining this program. All right, so there we are, we're ready to go. And if I want to, I can certainly delete out and uh, shorten that little gap that I had in my speech as well. Now at this point, if I want to move this whole thing together, I just click and hold and drag my mouse across all those tracks, and now I can move them together wherever I would like to in my project. So that's how you edit out the mistakes and uh, get the track all ready. It's how you add an effect, and you'll see that there's a lot of different effects in here uh, to choose from. You can even choose different types of amplifiers. Uh, you can't compound effects, meaning that if you choose one effect, you can't add another effect on top of it. Uh, there are some ways of fine-tuning the effects, though. So, for example, if I go back to my uh, to my voice stuff here, let's go... Actually, let's choose one of these. Distorted guitar, brown tone metal. I have no idea what this is going to sound like. Let's give it a shot and see. My name's Adam Cochran. I'm an instructor of mass communication. Okay, it sounds terrible, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. We're just doing this for demonstration purposes. If I want to fine tune that, I can come up here to the top and click on that little bar here. And you saw that button in, I believe it was episode two of, this, of these uh, videos in the tutorial. And now if you play this, uh, you'll be able to hear it and make the changes and adjust with these knobs just like I would in analog or real world uh, amplifier. At Colorado Mesa now, if I want to hear that and make some adjustments, uh, I can actually turn on this little uh, this little cycle button here and drag that out to whatever I want. And I can do the whole thing or just part of it. And then when I play, my name's Adam Cochran. I'm an instructor of mass communication. My name's Adam Cochran. I'm an instructor of mass communication. Okay. It will just keep playing that part over and over and over again. And that's handy because if I want to make changes, I'll move these sliders while that's playing and I can hear it without having to come up to the top and hitting stop, rewind, play, stop, rewind, play. I can just let it keep playing. My name's Adam Cochran. I'm an instructor of mass communication. My name's Adam Cochran. I'm an instructor of mass communication. My name's Adam Cochran. And I don't want to get too annoying with that, but you can My see that. My name's Adam Cochran. I'm an instructor of mass communication. My name's Adam Cochran. I'm an instructor of mass Okay, so you can see the changes and how they apply as we go along. Of course, that's really obnoxious, and that's not where we would probably go with it. We would probably just keep the voice on and uh, do something, a classic or an edge voice or whatever. And uh, when we do that, it changes these modes, and we can go through and change the reverb, the ambience, different uh, features like that as well. So that's where we're at. That's how you record a track, how you edit a track, and how you apply an effects uh, an effect to a track. I guess I should say one more thing. 
and this maybe should have been said earlier in the video, but that's all right. Uh, you can only apply these effects to tracks that are recorded or give you this waveform. The other type of track is a software instrument track or a MIDI track, and those you can't apply that effect to. You can run them through different types of uh, amplifiers and do some certain things with those, especially with the guitars, but for recorded stuff to be able to really modify it, it has to be one of these waveform tracks, which would come from a voice track or something that you recorded by actually connecting an electric guitar up to your uh, garage band or bringing in an MP3 of a, of a music file or a, a sound file. Uh, those are the only things that you can adjust to create these types of effects with. So I believe that covers it. Maybe I covered it too much, but we'll go back and revisit some of those topics uh, in later episodes as well. If you haven't watched any of the tutorials yet, besides this, episodes, make uh, this episode, please make sure you go back and watch the other ones because there's a lot of great tips hidden in there. Thank you very much.